Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, we continue talking about different problems. Uh, as part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. Um, now, this is a continuation course. The prerequisite is Mass for Teens, uh, which is basically a theory. Uh, some problems uh, presented there as well, but more traditional problems. In this course, I present something which is maybe not exactly um, covered by general um, course of mathematics in high school. Some may be a little bit unusual problems, well, some not that unusual. Anyway, so um, as I said, this is a continuation course. Unizor.com is a totally free educational website. Uh, not only Math for Teens course is presented as a prerequisite of this one, also there is a Physics for Teens course, um, there is a Relativity for All, there are some other courses as well. No ads, no strings attached, uh, sign-in is not necessary, uh, optional basically. So, okay, so back to business. So today we will solve a couple of problems which I consider to be algebraic. Uh, and uh, it's all about averages. So, um, the word average actually sometimes in, uh, is replaced in mathematics with the word mean. So I will basically use interchangeably. Like arithmetic average and arithmetic mean basically mean the same thing. So, um, I will start with a very, very simple problem. Here is a problem. You have a rectangular field and what's known about this particular field is that the fence around it has certain lengths L. So consider you have certain material to build the fence and you have this material sufficient to build lengths L of the lengths of the of the fence. Now you have a freedom to choose sides of this rectangle the way, the way how you want it. The question is what kind of A and B should be to maximize the area of this rectangle considering the perimeter should be still L. Okay. Now obviously as usually I suggest you to pause the uh, video in this particular case and try to solve this problem yourself. Now, the way how I will solve it is based on the following inequality. That um, so-called geometric average of two numbers is less or equal to their arithmetic average. Now, I have already spoken about this particular quality, about geometric and um, arithmetic uh, uh, means in the main course called Mass for Teens and um, the notes for this particular lecture contain exact reference in the main course where it is discussed. Basically you have to go to Mass for Teens course, it's Mass Concepts, um, the category is called Induction and it's one of the inductions lectures where I explain this particular inequality and not only for two numbers A and B, positive numbers by the way, but for any number of numbers. Uh, and that's where mathematical induction actually is used. So anyway, now because this is a very simple inequality, I'm going to prove it myself right now, very easily by the way. What I will start with, I will start with obvious inequality, which is equality only, is it's equal only if A is equal to B. Now we're talking about positive A and B, so there is no problem with the square root. Now this is obvious uh, inequality, uh, this because this is a square, obviously. So if I will open it up, I will have um, A minus 2 square root of AB plus B greater than equal to 0. So from this obvious um, inequality I derive this one and if I will move uh, 
uh, square root of a b to the right and divide by half, I will have a plus b divided by 2 greater or equal square root of a b, which is exactly what this is. So it's a very simple inequality, simple to prove it, but in this particular case it will serve us quite well. Why? Because a b is area of this particular uh, rectangle and a times b, uh, sorry and a plus b is half of the perimeter a plus b is half of the perimeter of the rectangle so what i'm saying right now is that square root of area is less than uh, or equal to L divided by 4, from which A is L squared to 16. So that's the maximum area which I can achieve. And when can I achieve this? When A is equal to B, because if you remember the equality, only if A is equal to B. Basically, that's it. Now, what's important about this is that I am using this particular inequality to, since this is a constant, it's half of the parameter, to uh, basically realize what's the maximum value and when it will be achieved. So the maximum value is L squared by 16 and it will be achieved if A is equal to B, which means it's a square. So in given, if, if perimeter is given of a rectangle, then the highest area is if this rectangle has equal sides, if it's a square. So that's my first problem. So this is just a kind of introduction to uh, inequalities related to um, means, to averages. Okay, the next thing which I will do is, again, let me mention again that in the uh, main course called uh, Mass for Teens on Unisor.com, in the first category, which is main concepts, in the chapter called induction, I um, basically uh, explain the um, inequality uh, between geometric and arithmetic average for any number of uh, any number of numbers, positive numbers. So I can say that x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xn divided by n, which is arithmetic average greater or equal square or uh, not square nth degree root of their product so this is an inequality which I have proven using mathematical induction um, in the uh, induction category induction chapter of the previous course <coughs> So I'm not going to repeat it right now because the, uh, the proof is uh, kind of complicated. However, what I will do is I will uh, prove some other inequalities. So right now I have what? That geometric uh, mean is less than or equal to arithmetic mean. Okay, that I have. Now, next thing is harmonic. Harmonic means if you have numbers x1, x2, xn, first you have to inverse all of them. And take their average. So that's average of their inverted values. And then I will invert the whole thing, which means I will do this. So that's what harmonic average is. Harmonic average, or harmonic means. Now, I would like to prove that this is less than geometric mean, which is this one. Now, how can I prove it? Well, actually, it's quite simple. Now, let's just substitute yi for every xi here. 
and I will use this inequality, which basically I consider as as given because I have already proven it before. Now all x's and all y's obviously are all positive numbers, so there is no problem with dividing. So let me just uh, use this to um, use this particular inequality with y's. So I will have y sigma. I'll use sigma y divided by n uh, greater or equal to square root, not square, nth root of product of y. I, I from 1 to n, I from 1 to n. So capital pi means product, capital sigma means sum. So this is an inequality which I already proven using y's. Now, what if y's are x's? So what happens in this case? Well, let's just replace it. So I will have, instead of y's, I will have x's. And instead of y's, I have x's here. Now, what difference between this and this? Well, actually, the only difference is that I have to invert each number. So if this number is greater than this one, then if I will invert it, then this would be less than this one, right? If 2 is greater than 1, 1 half is less than 1, right? If 3 is greater than 2, one third is less than one half, right? Whenever I invert the inequality, um, the sign is changed to the opposite. That's obvious, right? Okay, so if I will invert this, I will have this, right? And if I will invert this, so this is one over x. 1 times x2 times x3, etc. So if I will invert it, the root of n's uh, is retained, but all uh, inverted value, 1 over xi's, will be converted into their product. So that would be product of xi, i from 1 to n, which is geometric mean. So, to, to, to prove that harmonic mean is less than or equal to geometric mean, very, very simple. You just use the arithmetic and, uh, uh, and, and uh, geometric means inequality for inverted values, and that's it. And as a result, we have harmonic is less than geometric. Okay. Now, the next average which we will be talking about is quadratic average. And that will be greater than arithmetic. And then trying to prove it. Now, before proving it, let me just um, uh, introduce a couple of formulas. Now, what if you summarize, well, let me first start with a couple of a plus b plus c squared, which means a plus b plus c times a plus b plus c. What happens if you will just open all the parentheses? Well, first you will have certain number of squares, because this is, whenever you multiply it by itself, so a times a would be a squared, b times b would be b squared, and c times c would be c squared. So first of all, you will have three squares. Secondly, you will have a product of two different um, uh, variables, like a to b, or b to c, or b to a, because both sides will be, uh, let, let me just do it a times a square plus a times b a b plus uh, a c then b b 
a plus b square plus bc plus c times a, c times b, and c times c. So you have these three squares, and you have uh, pairs of different. Now you have a, b, and b, a, and so it's basically 2 a, b. So it would be 2 a, b, it would be uh, AC and CA, so you will have 2AC, and you have BC and CB, right? So it's 2BC. So all these are of different uh, numbers. Um, so the way how we can present it basically uh, is uh, 2 times AB plus B. A, a C plus B C, right? Okay, now that's for three, but now I would like to have the same formula for n different square equals. Well, it will be the same thing because if you multiply this sum by the same sum, you will have certain number of squares x1 square plus x2 square plus etc plus xn square plus certain number of double products now what kind of products well basically it's sum of xi times xj where i less than j let me put it this way which means x1 times x2, x1 times x3, etc., x1 times xn, then x2 times x3, x2 times x4, etc., etc. So these are all different pairs of unequal uh, indices with the first one less than the second one. You see, a and the second one is b, a and the third one was c, and then the second one b and the third c, and there are no more for three. But if, it, if you have four, it would be A, B, A, C, A, D, then B, C, B, D, and then C, D. So it's basically exactly the same thing. So for this, that would be, and let me just use the sigma in this case. Sigma x i square, square i from 1 to n. All right, <coughs> so that's the formula, basically, whenever you're multiplying by itself. Just keep it in mind, that's very important. And uh, I will use it. Now, another formula which I would like to introduce is the following. What if you have xi minus xj squared? Sig sigma a less than g. Now, what what is this basically? In case of three, a, b, and c, it's a minus b square plus a minus c square plus b minus c square, right? So now, the way how that would be. Uh, again, each one would be square of this, square of this, and minus double product, right? So it would be x, y square minus 2, I'll, I'll start with a plus, plus x, j square and minus 2, x, i, x, j, i from i less than j. Right? Okay. And uh, how many i's and j's, basically, how many uh, different squares we will have here? Well, um, let's just think about it. With i equal to 1, you have. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., n minus 1. So it would be n minus 1 times x1 square, right? 
Now this x2 you will have basically the same thing. You will have um, uh, x2 then x3 etc etc but already x2 square was already uh, already counted once so you will have exactly the same thing n minus 1 x2 square so you will have in this case 2a square 2b square 2c square this one and this one so with three different things you will have two with n different things you will have n minus one etc and, and then you will have minus two and I will leave it as is sigma x i x j i less than j so that's another formula which I would like to retain basically uh, with your attention so again let me just use this one so this is C, uh, n minus 1 sigma x i square i from 1 to n minus 2 sigma i less than j of uh, x i x j so that's another formula which I need okay and the formula which I had uh, before, x1, well, let's put it again using sequence. xi square, i from 1 to n, what is that? That's sigma xi square, right? Plus 2, um, sigma x i x j i less than j that's the one which I uh, derived before so these are very important formula and using this formula I will prove that um, arithmetic average arithmetic mean is less than equal to quadratic mean and what's the quadratic mean? That's x1 square plus x2 square plus etc. plus xn square. So we first averaging the squares and then have a square root. And the arithmetic mean is sigma of xi divided by n. So I would like to prove this particular inequality. Well, Again, all numbers are positive, so instead of proving this one, I will just use the square of this. It's exactly the same thing. So I have to prove that sigma xi divided by n square, 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 less than or equal to, and I will get rid of the square root. I have to prove this inequality. Well, <coughs> I will use this formula for my square. Well, first of all, I can get rid of 1n. That would be easy, right? And I will put n to this. Times n. Okay? That's the same thing that's invariant transformations of my inequality. So from original inequality, I first I square both sides, and then I multiply by n square. Now instead of this, I will use this one. So it's sigma xi square plus 2 sigma xi xj i less than j. 
Well, all indices are presumed to be between 1 and n, obviously. I don't uh, write it down, but that's assumed. That's on the left side. Now, on the right side, I have n times sigma xi squared. So, I will get rid of this sigma, and I will put here, instead of n, n minus 1. That's the same thing. Again, invariant transformation. Now, look at this. If I will transform this, if I will put everything on the right side, it would be n minus 1 times sigma of squares minus double product, minus double product, and this is this, which is sum of squares, which is always positive, right? Non-negative, let's put it this way. So basically, I come with an obvious inequality, 0 less than sigma xi minus xj squared, where i less than j. So that's basically the end of the proof, because I can, well, it's not exactly the end of the proof. I come up with obvious inequality, because these are sum of squares, obviously it's non-negative. Now, what's important is to say, okay, all these transformations can be reversed, and from the obvious, I can go to this, to this, to this, and obviously, at the very end, I will come to uh, the inequality which I am looking for, which is this one. So, arithmetic average is um, less than or equal to uh, quadratic averages. And again, by the way, when the equality is, uh, when this is equal to zero, only if all x's are equal to each other. So if all these independent terms are equal to zero, only then I will have equal to zero, and only then my inequality becomes equality as well as in all these cases. So if all numbers are exactly the same, then we will have everything equal. If at least one pair of numbers not equal to each other, then that would be inequality, a strong, strong inequality. Basically, that's it. And uh, this is basically, well, this is a summary. Harmonic average, harmonic means Less, less than uh, geometric means, less than or equal to arithmetic means, and less than or equal to quadratic means, or quadratic average, whatever you prefer. So that's it for today. I would suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Notes contain, well, it's very important actually. First of all, there is a reference, exact reference to lecture where I'm mm, uh, proving the uh, geometric less than or equal to arithmetic mean. That's very important. It's a proof by induction, and it's not a trivial proof. It's really kind of complicated. Okay, so I do suggest you to repeat that. That's in the lecture of the first course, prerequisite course, Mass 14th. And uh, again, review the notes for this particular lecture, where some of the proofs are presented, some are basically left to you. But anyway, it's always very useful to, to do it yourself. Try to basically prove whatever I'm <coughs> sorry, whatever I'm proving right now at the board, try to prove it yourself. Just have a piece of paper or whatever and try to write it down very, very detailed. So every statement would be uh, absolutely um, correct without any kind of questions that somebody might ask you why. And it's important actually these two um, uh, identities, this one and, and this one, they are very important and they are important in this particular proof. So again, go through them, do it in a couple of examples. For instance, in my uh, notes for this lecture um, about quadratic uh, versus uh, arithmetic mean, I'm using two examples with two numbers and with four numbers. Before I engage the 
general description with sums and products, etc., etc. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.